<laughs> and we are online. Did you do my homework for me, soon? You're supposed I don't to know, but we just saw right through your head from one end to the other. Okay, we're online. It's going to be First Corinthians. And... Must be right there. And we have this week and next week left. Next week we'll do two classes of First Corinthians, and I think we should be able to get hopefully done with the book. And we're on um, page forty-nine. Let me get my Bible over here. Forty-nine three. Yeah. I cheated and looked. Get back here, lady. <laughs> I spilled coffee all over my coffee. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. I think we're in chapter 12. I'll check, but I think that's about where we are. Okay. Yeah, we're in chapter 12. All right. And you said page 49 in the textbook? Yeah, 49. Page 49. Yep. Okay. We'll get it on the screen for those that are at home. And there is page 49. Okay, so it's the unity of the church body. U-N-I-T-Y. U-N-I-T-Y. The unity of the church body, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. I'll go ahead and read that. 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And I think we went through that last week, didn't we? Yeah, we're yeah. Okay. Number three, so right. now down on number three. Yeah. Okay, let me get down there for you. Number three. There we go. Number three, the illustration. I-L-L-U-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. Illustration. And that's verses 14 to 20. And he talked about the human body. That's A, the human body. Yep. All of the parts are important to make up the whole. Verses 14 to 17. I'm just going to read those and then we'll go back through them. Verses 14 to 17. For the body is not one member, but many. So he's likening the church there at Corinth and the local New Testament Baptist church to the human body. If the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? When I was doing when I was doing tent meetings, I was I was going to preach on that verse. I tried to find a great big ball about that big and paint it like an eyeball, <laughs> and put a gas cylinder on it. Oh, yeah. Say if the whole body were an eye, <laughs> and throw it out there. So a big eyeball would be floating around. Oh, I never could oh, find one though. Oh darn it! Yeah, I would I would have loved to have that because I love illustrations, yeah. love visuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. All of the parts are important to make up the whole. B. God made all of the parts of the whole as he pleased. Therefore, no one part can gloat over another part because God made all the parts to please himself, not us. Verse 18. A body to function needs an eye, it needs a hand, it needs feet, it needs an ear, it needs a mouth. The church is the same way. That's one problem we have in our churches God puts people in there with a particular gift of being the hand, yeah. of serving people, going out handing out tracts. Somebody needs food, they'll take you know a box of food from the food bank and take go out and helping, helping people. But then there's some that just have, they're maybe the eye of the church, and, and they'll go to the pastor maybe and they'll say, you know, I've been watching and brother so-and-so just seems like they're really down. Just, I've been watching them, and they look like they're really sad down in the mouth. And maybe the pastor didn't hadn't seen that. Yeah. But that person just, they watch people, and, and they pick up on things. 
They're the eye. They're watching out that this this sister over here, uh, uh, she's being attacked by the devil. How can you tell? Well, because she missed church last week, but I saw her downtown coming out of the tavern. Now, that's not accusing that person. That's just saying that person needs some help. And so there's people that are the ear, and there's people that are the foot, and the hand, and the eye. So a human body, to function properly, needs all the parts. A church needs the same thing. And if the members that are given a particular gift don't exercise that gift, then you have a church that is disabled and it won't grow. Why? Well, because maybe the one that's supposed to be the hand will not exercise their gift of helps, helping people. And so when someone's maybe lost their job and the pastor doesn't know about it, no one told him, and then that one that should be helping that person coming to the pastor saying, hey, you know, they lost their job last week. I'm going to take them a box of food out of the food bank. Yeah. But see, if they don't do that, then that person, even though, and I've seen this happen, people go to the hospital. No one told the pastor that that person was even in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then they get mm -hmm. mad because nobody came to visit them. And I've seen that happen on several occasions. No one told them that that person was even sick. So it's the same way with the person that has the hands of the church, the one that's got that gift of helps. They won't do it. So that person that lost their job, they're upset because nobody from the church came to help them, and they'll quit the church. Now the church is even more disabled. Yes. But shouldn't the pastor's job be to check on the people that could yes, be sick they would. in his congregation? Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm not saying he shouldn't do that. Yeah. I'm just saying that person with the gift of helps, yeah. if they won't do their part, that part of the body is missing. Mm -hmm. And the one with the eye that's been watching people and, and maybe the pastor's been really, really busy and didn't notice that person was down in the mouth. Now, if he notices it and doesn't do anything about it, then that's his problem. Mm -hmm. he, he's not doing his job. All right? And so... But it's not just the pastor. It's everyone in the church needs to be exercising their gifts because it says he puts them in the church as it pleases him. He puts the hand in there. He puts the eye in there, puts the ear in there, and the mouth, the feet, etc., so that the whole body working together will not be disabled. But if one or two or more of the members, or like you said, maybe the pastor's not doing their job, that's going to really disable the church then because if there's... If the pastor's not doing their job, there's no direction for the church because that's what he's supposed to do. It says that he gave some to the church, uh, apostles, evangelists, and those, and et cetera, et cetera, prophets, those are gone, apostles are gone, but the evangelists and pastors and teachers to prepare the members for the work of the ministry. The pastor's job is to direct the direction that the church is going. I'm going to get back over here. Direct a church so that it's going in the right direction and making sure that the people are exercising their gifts. So if the pastor's not doing his job, now the church doesn't have any direction. See, every member. But the pastor's job is pastors and teachers. They're supposed to teach the members how to exercise the gifts that God has given them. And that's his job. Without him doing his job, church has no direction. It'd be like a body running around with no head. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I know a lot of people that run around with no brains. Yeah. Just being facetious. Okay. So God made all of the parts of the whole as he pleased. I need to get back to uh, the text. There we go. Okay. Uh, there. All right. B. God made all of the parts of the whole as he pleased. Therefore, no one part can gloat over another part because God made all the parts to please himself, not us. Verse 18. All of the parts are interdependent and important to the proper functioning of the body as a whole. Their diversity is necessary to the unity. Your human body. How many bodies do I have? One. One body. So it's a unity. Yeah. However, it's made of many parts. Uh -huh. Got to have the hands, got to have the feet, got to have the brain, got to have the mouth, got to have the ear. Uh, and I like to remind people, you know why God gave us two ears and one mouth? So we can listen twice as much. Listen twice as much as we speak. The Bible says only a fool gives all of his mind. 
yakety, 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 and everything that drops in their mind comes out their mouth. Even Confucius, not our cat, but the Chinese <laughs> sage Confucius, <laughs> Confucius said, uh, empty mind into mouth before opening the same. Think before you speak. And that's a biblical principle that you just keep yakking and yakking and yakking and yakking. People get tired of hearing, hearing it to begin with. But also, pretty quick, you're going to say something and you're going to go, why did I say that? Yeah. Only a fool does that. Right. Just, you know, think before we speak. But without the brain, the body can't function. But without the feet and the hands, the brain can't live because there's no way to go get food and a mouth to eat it with so the brain can stay alive. So all the parts are equal. Yes. Uh, I've talked before about the big toe. Why is the big toe important? So you can you run. can't run without it. Yeah. You, it, you can hobble along fast without your big toe, but you're going to have a real hard time trying to run. That's why in many of the ancient cultures, when they would conquer another nation, they take all the soldiers and cut their big toes off. Whoa. Take, yeah. And take all the horse. That way they could still work in the fields, but you're not going to be a very good soldier if you can't run toward the enemy or away from them, you know, in a retreat. The horses, they would hoff their, their hooves, which means they cut the Achilles tendon, the tendon on the back of the heel. Yeah. Because then the horse could still be used as a plow horse, but it's not going to be used as a war horse. It can't right. trot or run with that Achilles tendon cut. And so every part of the body, the big toe is just as important as, as the mouth or the brain, right. because spiritually speaking, how are you going to run if the devil's overwhelming you and you need to go find a place of shelter? You're going to have to have your big toe so you can run. In fact, he tells us that uh, all the parts are interdependent and important to the proper functioning of the body as a whole. Their diversity is necessary to their unity, verses 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? Yeah. And then verses 21 to 24, dependent relationship of their parts. Verses 21, verse 21, each part needs the other parts. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. My brain's not going to tell my feet, uh, go ahead and take a vacation, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> That's true. Uh, if you don't think the parts are interdependent, ask someone that's been in a horrendous accident and lost both their legs. And they're in a wheelchair. Can they get around? Yes. Can they function? Yes. But I don't remember ever talking to anybody in a wheelchair that said I'd rather be in this wheelchair than have both my legs back. Mm -hmm. I, I just, personally, I've never met anyone like that. Why? Because they know that they're not functioning the way they used to function. No, uh, Stomach yes. muscles. <laughs> Stomach muscles, same way, yeah. You, you can't lift more than... Abs? I need you, some abs. Can I borrow yours? <laughs> yeah, you can't lift more than, what, 30, 30 pounds? pounds? Yeah. No. Because they had to cut all... They made that right. frowny fish mouth across there. <laughs> uh, at the meeting last night, he was talking about being born without a brain. Uh, encephalopy? Encephalopathy. Anyway, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing Encephalepi. Encephalepi. Okay. But my, it would have been my. Encephaly. Encephaly. Encephaly, yeah. Uh, my aunt's baby was born without a brain. Cousin. Yeah, that would be my cousin or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your cousin. My aunt's. Right, my aunt's child. I don't, it was a girl, too. Beautiful. They said it was a beautiful baby. I mean, just beautiful looking, you know. But it was brain with about a walnut sized thing on the top of this, the, where the brain stand, you know, the yeah. spine comes up and connects to the brain. And all. It was just like a walnut size. Lived for, I think, a few hours or, or maybe a day or two. Not very long. Um, and so. Uh, um, yeah. Beautiful body, all the right number of fingers, all the right number of toes, you know, everything, but without the brain, it, the body was worthless. And so how can the body say the brain's not important? But then how can the brain that's fully developed say 
the body's not important. And he was talking about people that were, you know, born with four arms and that. I had my grandpa's library. I wish I still had it, but it got burned up. Um, back in the 18, about 1865 to about 1885 or 90, they used to put out um, like an encyclopedia volume once a year. And I had his medical encyclopedias. And I think it was 1865 to maybe 85 or something like that. So somewhere back in the late 1800s. Uh -huh. And they had pictures of people like the lady that he showed, you know, with, with two heads. I wasn't there. Oh, that's right. You weren't there. Uh, they're like Siamese twins, only in that particular case, it was a body, but two heads formed, right. not two bodies. Right. Uh, in the medical encyclopedias, um, pictures of people with two legs growing out of their kneecaps. So they had four legs. Oh. Uh, out of every so many thousand children that are born, they're born with six toes. Oh, yes. But it's just a nub. Oh, so they okay. just cut it off at birth. Oh. Yeah. And so there are, because we live in a fallen world, strange things happen. Ying and Yang. Ying and Yang were the most famous Siamese twins. Men, brothers, born hooked together. Mm -hmm. And they lived their whole life. They got both got married, had families, everything. And when one of them got some kind of disease and started to die, uh, they told the other one, we need to separate you from your brother or you're going to die. He said, I've lived my whole life right. with my brother attached to me. So and they were attached like here. He said no. So he laid there and died with his brother. Wouldn't that kind of be bigamy if they shared everything except their heads and brains if they both had different partners uh, no because one would have to learn and there are siamese twin women that have both married like yin and yang had each had their own wife but you just had to learn how how to cope with that yeah but if they share everything except their heads and their brains it'd be a little strange the one would be able to withdraw and uh, let the other one run the body mentally it just it's tough it's tough having too many body parts um, here Paul is saying listen if you have a, a proper functioning body two feet two legs two arms one head etc for your body to function fully all the parts have to work together yeah. what if my hand just decided it didn't like me anymore <laughs> well, my body's not going to get along too well, is it? Because the other one's going to go, no, 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 no. And then my foot's going to get in there and try to kick the hand. No, every part has to function properly. Yeah. Then the body's functioning as a whole. Right. If even one if if one finger, uh, my brother Bruce, when we were kids, uh, he had a friend in school that had a shotgun and it was back when the cars, you could buy the old cars that still had the running boards along the side. Pickups still have them, but not yeah. too many cars. Yeah. I don't think any cars do. Mm -hmm. Probably some of the European cars do. But the kid had a shotgun. Instead of holding the barrel like this, he just grabbed it across the top. Oh. Yeah. And he, and he, for some reason, he slammed it down on the running board, and it blew off some of his fingers and his yeah. thumb. It went off. Wow. Yeah. And he had... I think he just he either had these two or these two left. And I mean, his whole the rest of his hand was gone. They were able to sew him back together, but he just had the two. Uh, I'm sure he would rather have had all five of his fingers, right. yeah. well, four and a thumb, rather than just the two that were left. Right. Uh, so that's what Paul's saying here. He said, how can the hand say it's more important than, than the eye? Or the eye is more important than the foot, and the foot says, well, I'm not this, so I'm not important. He said, no, for the church to function properly, it has to be like a fully formed, normal, natural, functioning human body. And every part in the church has to do their part, just like every part of your body. Now, if, if, if I lose a hand, yeah, I can still function, but I'm not going to function as well as I did. So that's what he's saying with the church. That's why people in churches don't quite, many times don't understand that 
when they say, well, I'm mad, I'm not going to do this. They're not just hurting themselves. They're hurting the entire church. church. I'm just not going to do this anymore. Or or I've uh, I've taught Sunday school for 25 years. I'm tired. I'm not going to do it anymore. They still got the gift of teaching. They still are in their right mind. I'm not talking about someone that maybe is, you know, developing memory problems and that. But if they're able to mentally and physically fulfill their function in the body, they need to do it or the body's going to be hurt. Now, sometimes parts of the body are told they can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not their fault. But the one that knows someone has a gift and tells them, no, you can't do it. Is that going to help the body? Nope. It's going to hurt the body. Why? Because you're not allowing that gift to be used that God put in the church to help the body function as a whole. So, very important part of Scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. I still got a bit of that virus left. <coughs> Gracia, would you grab that honey over there uh -huh. for me, please? Wasn't that interesting yesterday about that one species of dinosaurs that consistently lost that one toe that showed up in the print? <coughs> yeah. Were you we, awake during that? We went up and listened to some. <laughs> we went up and listened to some lectures. My problem is when I sat down, my body said, "Oh, time to sleep," <laughs> because my normal day goes from well, I try to get up at whenever, eight thirty, whenever, <laughs> but from then till like midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Whoa! Yum. It coats the throat and it stops does. the cough. It does. Honey's very good for that. I'm letting it trickle down the back there. And the cough is gone. They gave me codeine, codeine cough syrup. Mm -hmm. Doctor says, well, if you haven't been sleeping but four or five hours a night, take this, it'll stop the cough, and you will sleep tonight. <laughs> I took it, and you know what it did? What? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> right. I mean, total zero. It didn't stop the cough. And I didn't get sleepy. Didn't I, and it's codeine. But for some reason, my body just didn't. So now I keep Sambacol for the cough, which is a natural uh, black elderberry. Is that what it is? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I keep honey to get the cough away. Cool. So <clears throat> there we go. So, and see, without the throat, it's real hard for the brain to talk. Right. So every part is equal. And that's what he said. Um, verse, 20, verse 21, each part needs the other part. The seemingly feeble, most feeble, are very necessary. Uh, let me get that up a little bit for you. Like the vocal cords. Yeah. <laughs> verse 22. In verse 22, he says, Not name, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You can't see my vocal cords. Nope. You can't see my big toe. Oh. You can't see my Achilles tendon. They used to do that to soldiers, too. If they didn't cut the toe off, not only the horses, they'd cut the Achilles tendon on the soldiers. Let it heal up. Well, now they can work in the field. But now they're really not going to run mm -hmm. and be able to fight in the battle. Okay? So he said uh, those ones, the seemingly most feeble, are very necessary. Three, the uncomely parts need more care, so we give them more care. Literally, we clothe them. Verses 23 and 24. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but feet are not the most beautiful thing on the human body. <laughs> They're not. They're just, I mean, I don't dislike them, but if I had a choice between my wife's face and her feet, I think I'd check, pick her face mm -hmm. as the most beautiful part, all right? Oh, yeah. and you can call that luxus if you want to. But many people's feet just really don't look. Mine are just fine. I know, dear. They are. I didn't say they weren't. I just said your feet are fine, but your face is finer. Now you're in the dog. There we go. Okay. Well, that's all right. I sleep up here sometimes. Um, but most people think that feet are not the most beautiful part of the human body. Right. But yet in the Bible we find beautiful are the feet of them. Yep. And I'm just paraphrasing. That carry the gospel. 
Okay, so that's what he's saying here. The ones sometimes that we think are the less honorable, the less comely, the less beautiful, sometimes they're the most important. Because I'll tell you what, if you back at the time of Christ, especially, and then at the time this was written, most people walked everywhere. So those feet were very, very important for spreading the gospel because yes. they had to walk everywhere they went. Yeah. And isn't it sad that the Chinese felt they had to improve on God's creation by mm -hmm. foot binding those poor Chinese women oh, and yeah. making them little, tiny, so make little tiny feet? Break their toes in the process. Mm. Yeah. Oh, My mom was born with one foot like this. Straight out, it's called a club foot. And from the time she was about two years old, they'd have to break it. Let it heal. Oh man. And break it and let it heal. And break it and let it heal. Until finally Until it, went like that. it was a foot. Oh huh. wow. She always walked a she didn't have a, a funny walk, but you could always tell there was something just not quite like it should be. Oh, and I didn't find out until years later that she was born with a club foot. I was born looking at this side of my nose. They had to put glasses on me when I was two years old. They called it a lazy eye at that time, okay? But now that they've got it straightened out, my body functions a lot better than it did when I was, you know, cross-eyed. Because that eye was just, it was almost looking over at my nose. So very, and still when I get tired, my eyes, my eyes tend to go, you know, a little, <laughs> a little bit like that. I'd throw them against the wall. Why? Because I didn't want to be called Fatso Four Eyes. That's what they called me from the time I was got in school, which was when I was five. Uh, for the first two or three years, Mom would tell Dad, "Well, he broke his glasses again." The teacher says, "Yeah, he broke his. Uh, he accidentally broke his glasses." The teacher says, "Yeah, he accidentally broke them. Threw them against the wall. So I accidentally broke them." But you see how important every part of your body is. Your feet. They have to function properly for the body to function properly. The eye, the church is exactly the same way. And the uncomely parts need more care, so we give them more care. Literally, we clothe them. Uh, Paratithemain means to clothe or put on a garment the parts that need the less help. I want to make sure I got all of it in there for you. The parts that need the less help must care for the parts that need the most help. Because those weaker parts are necessary to the body as a whole, which, of, of course, includes the stronger, less needy parts. Number four. The strong protects, or cares for, naturally makes up for any lack in the weak, and together they become a strong, unified whole. Verse 24. For the comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant, given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, which lacked. And so, you know, my feet, and most people's feet, if you don't tend to them, they tend to go bad. That's why in the army, they make them take care of their feet. Because what does the foot soldier walk on? His foots. That's what he walks on. And so they make sure that if your feet get wet, you've got to take your boots off and your socks, and, and you have to dry them out. The same thing when you're up hunting. I bet there's nothing worse than getting in and having to walk in the stream. And then how would you try to sleep or do anything? Not only that, when your feet are wet, the socks will abrade sores onto your feet. you got to stop and dry them out, man. That's all. Now, the hands, and my wife loves my hands, by the way, the hands would be what she would call a more comely part of me rather than my feet. But when my feet go bad, they're not going to fix themselves. I have to take care of them. I have, if I don't dry them off when they're wet, if I don't change the socks, wash out the socks, my mom, <laughs> every night, she'd wash out her undies and her socks. That was just her habit. She'd just wash them out, hang them up to dry, and so, even though the feet may be as necessary as the hands, they need a little more care. Right. And so, the more comely parts have to take care of the necessary but more needy parts. Same way in a church. It's exactly the same way. Maybe, maybe the, uh, the feet of the church, the one that loves to go out and pass out tracts and everything, and then you find out they lost their job. And they lost their house. 
Mm. And they're living on the street. How are they going to carry out that ministry when they're destitute? So what's the church supposed to do? Take care of them. The hand, wash the feet. In fact, what did Jesus do when, when the apostles came in? He girded himself like a, like a servant, like a house slave, and he got down and washed their feet. There's a spiritual application to that, that he said, you know, you're in the world, you're going to get some dirt when you walk through this world, sin in your life, some dirt into your life spiritually. But also, at that time, if you came into someone's house and, and they didn't wash your feet, you thought, what kind of a host are they? Because remember, out in the street, you got camels going by that had a good breakfast, you need to get rid of the waste. You had donkeys going by. You had to get rid of the waste. The people people on, you know, narrow streets. I live in the house up here, and I just finished washing the dishes. What do I do with the uh, wash water? Throw it out front. Out the window. Out in the street. So it was a custom at that time when someone came to your house, you washed their feet. You had a slave in the house, if you were rich enough to have a slave, that that was their job was taking care of things like that and washing the feet. N number one, so the person's feet would get clean and they'd feel more comfortable. Number two, because I didn't want you walking all that stuff into my house. <laughs> I mean, it was good for both people, see? Right. Right. Same way in the church. When the, the ones that have more take care of the ones that are just as needy as far as the body functioning properly, but they have some physical needs, when the ones that have the ability take care of them, the whole church is better off. It functions better. And so the strong protects, cares for, naturally makes up for any lack in the weak, and together they become a strong, unified whole. That was verse 24. Sunkarasan, to mix together and commingle so as to make two or more elements become one compound. So in other words, when they take care of each other, it's all mixing together and making one unified church that can function properly and will grow. Why? Because the feet and the mouth of the church are usually the ones that are out soul winning. And a church needs food. Mm -hmm. The body is going to die without taking sustenance in from outside. Mm -hmm. So the pastor teachers, their job, according to the Bible, is to teach the members how to carry out the ministry of soul winning, bringing them in to get them baptized, helping in Sunday school, helping in the discipleship program. That's what the pastor is supposed to teach the members to do. Is the pastor to, to do the same thing? Absolutely. But in too many churches, they go, oh, that's what we pay the pastor for. That's his job, soul winning. That's his job to go out and visiting people. That's why churches are supposed to have deacons because the deacons are supposed to take care of many of those jobs so that the pastors can give themselves over to prayer and study of the word. So they can feed the sheep. So the sheep who, in a, in a herd, in a flock of sheep, who is having the baby sheep? Is it the sheep or the shepherd? The sheep. The sheep, because the shepherd's a human person. They can't beget sheep. So that's why Jesus said that we are like sheep. And we're to beget other sheep. We're to win souls and get more people to come in. Now, the pastor as a Christian does that also. But it's the job of all of the church working together. So that way they commingle and make one unified whole. All right. E. <clears throat> the reasons for the uniting of the several into the one body, verse 25 that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Schisms, division. <laughs> division. Okay? That there be no divisions in the body, now it is one. That's the reason for uh, uniting of the several into the one body. All right. Uh, number two. I need to go down a little bit for you. Up. Too far. Number two, and that every part should be cared for so that the body could function as one. Um, F, the results, common sharing of trouble, troubles and blessings, verse 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. 
or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. So if the, if the body, the church, is a unified whole, it's like your body when all the parts are functioning properly. You know, when I've been out walking and I have my church shoes on instead of my everyday shoes, these are my walking shoes. Boy, when I get done, my feet are not feeling very good. Right. They're, they're tired, they're hot, they ache. And I've lost part of the feeling on the bottom of my toes and that, you know, that'll kind of burn a little bit. And when I sit down and my feet are resting, my whole body goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm rejoicing with them feet that are resting. Oh, yeah. But now there's another side to the story. My grandpa was in a nursing home and they didn't take very good care of him. He got an infection in his heel. Mm. It turned to blood poisoning. They cut off part of his heel. Oh, my. It was in the foot. They cut his foot off. Oh. It was in the leg. They were going to cut his leg off. He died first. And he was a doctor is the sad part. Yeah, he was a naturopath, a natural doctor. And here he dies of blood poisoning because people are not taking care of him. Oh, my and so when his heel suffered, yeah. his whole body suffered with it. Yeah. That's what he's saying here. That's like people with diabetes. They, same thing, they get sores on their feet. Bonnie's, that's in heaven, her dad, he was in the Second World War. He was reported missing in action, presumed dead in Germany. He had laid in a ditch, wounded, laid in the ditch for several days and froze his legs. So he froze his legs. They, did, they put him in a hospital, but during the war, they lost track of him in Germany. So they told his wife, missing in action, presumed dead. And it was months and months, almost a year, maybe a year later. Oh. They finally got him back to the States and he walked in the door and she almost fainted. Yeah. But from that time on, he had no hair on his legs. None, because he'd froze his legs. He could still use them and walk, but it had destroyed the skin in his legs. That's why he spent months and months and months in the hospital, all right? Well, as he got older, he developed diabetes, and he got phlebitis, which is clogged blood vessels, uh, varicose veins, mm -hmm. only oh. to an extreme. Okay. Phlebitis. One of our presidents had that, too, and wound up in the hospital. Wasn't that uh, Ford? Uh, it might have been Ford. One of them wound up in the hospital. They have to go in and strip those veins mm. because they're plugged up. They, strip the, they cut him open, strip the veins, but because of his diabetes... Those, they never healed shut. And eventually he died from that. Uh, the legs, he could use them, but just something as simple as the skin that wouldn't function. By the way, your skin is the largest organ in the body. Right. It's one organ. Mm -hmm. And when your skin suffers, you suffer with it, don't you? <laughs> so have I. When they are. Okay? So here he's saying uh, every part could be cared for so that the body could function as one. The results of common sharing of troubles and blessings. When one member suffers, we all suffer with it. When one member rejoices, we all rejoice. When my feet are resting, my whole body is going, ah, and I don't want to get back up again. Right, right. But you get infection. You could die from infection in your little finger if it turned into blood poisoning. Once it gets in the blood, it goes everywhere. And they, they started cutting parts off his body, off my grandpa's body, but eventually it killed him. It was Nixon, not Ford. Nixon, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, that had phlebitis. Okay, so application to the church at Corinth, the body of Christ manifested locally. That's uh, verses 27 to 31. The application of the application to the local church at Corinth. Is there any, no blanks so far? No. The application to the local church at Corinth, it is one body, the body of Christ, and is unified just as a man's body is, verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ. So he was talking about your eye and your hand and your foot, and he said, now let's apply this one unified body all functioning properly. Let's apply that to the church. Now ye are the body of Christ. Why? Well, because Christ has ascended to heaven, and the local church is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is Christ being manifested on earth. 
the local church is his body. Now then, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. It is one body, the body of Christ, and is unified just as a man's body is. That body of Christ is made up of many members with many functions, just like the human body is. B. The hierarchy of functions of the members of the local church. Functions. F-U-N-C-T-I. O-N-S. F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N-S. The hierarchy of functions of the members of the local church. Verse 28. Hierarchy, hierarchy of rank. So let's read verse 28. And God has set some in the church. First, I mentioned that verse earlier. And God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, Thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongue, diversities of tongues. So the hierarchy of a rank, he gives that, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly, teachers. Then a list of gifts, probably in hierarchy of importance. Miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Note, contrary to the de facto practice in teachings of the charismatic movement, tongues is listed last as probably the least important gift. And he's going to do that later. He said the number one gift is love. Far above prophets who were speaking at that time for God. In tongues. Far above interpretation of tongues. Far above performing miracles. Far above performing healings, above all of them, is love. So, five, the diversity of the functions of the members, verses 29 and 30. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? Now, wait a minute. The Pentecostal church, I'm not getting on our Pentecostal brothers, I'm just telling you what they teach. Mm -hmm. They originally taught, if you did not speak in tongues, you were not saved. Mm -hmm. Then they got away from that for about 20 years. Then there was another split, and some of them went back to that teaching, and some of them stayed away from that teaching. But here he's saying, hey, not everybody spoke in tongues. But he was talking to a church of saved people, because it was called the Church of God at Corinth. It doesn't matter if your name's written on the pages of the rolls of the church. You're really not a member of that church unless you're saved. Yeah, but my name's on the roll. That just means you're coming to church. Yeah. If you're not saved, you may be a member as far as people on earth are concerned, but as far as God's concerned, you're not a member of that church. You may be attending, pay, may even be tithing, might even be teaching a Sunday school, might even be pastoring the church. Hmm. And still be lost. Um, yeah. So. Does that go along with pretending? Like what yeah, pretenders. <laughs> yeah. And so. If. You have to speak in tongues to be saved. That meant if you didn't speak in tongues. What did that mean? You weren't saved. That you weren't saved. All right. But here Paul is saying, it's a rhetorical question. Do all speak in tongues? He said, not everybody in your church speaks in tongues. Well, does that mean that they were not saved? No, he just said, God gives gifts to people that he wants to give them to, to help edify, build up the body of that local New Testament church. But just because he gives me one gift, doesn't mean he's going to have to give it to all of you. We all have different gifts. And so he said there are diversities. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And so um, not all have the same function. Are all. How, I'm back on the textbook. Are all. Have all. Do all. Uh, may pantes. Meaning an understood negative of the question, all, these are all rhetorical questions, and the expected answer to each is no. Do all have the gifts of healing? No. Do all prophesy? No. Do Are all apostles? No. 
Do all speak in tongues? No. Not all had all of these gifts. We know this is the proper understanding of this verse because of the analogy given in the previous verses. Not all members of the human body have one single function, as Paul just showed us, else there would be no functioning whole, the body. Likewise, in the body of Christ, the local church at Corinth, all members cannot have a single function, else the body of Christ, the whole, could not function. If the whole body was an eye, where's the hearing? If the, you know, whole, if the whole body's a hand, where's the what? And said, no, different parts of the body, so the whole body can be a unified functioning whole. Mm -hmm. Same way in the church. Note, 1 Corinthians 12, 29 to 30, once and for all shows the lie of the charismatic movement concerning tongues. Their heresy dictates that speaking in tongues, that's those particular ones that say you have to speak in tongues to be saved. Why? Because back then when the gift of tongues was legal, biblical, so to speak, they could only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was not just they made up something. It was the Holy Spirit speaking the Word of God through them to the people because they didn't have the Word of God. And we're going to go into that particular bit here in just a little bit. Their heresy dictates that speaking in tongues is a sign of the possession of the Holy Ghost, which we know happens at salvation. There are some groups that believe you get saved, and then you have to pray for the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that you get saved, but then you have to pray to receive the Holy Ghost. No, there is only one indwelling. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit indwells you, right. comes to live in you. Yes. But there are many fillings. I can be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, get mad at brother Robert and decide I'm not coming to church and I'm not going to teach and I'm not going to preach because I'm mad. <laughs> well, I've still got the Holy Spirit, but I'm refusing to let the Holy Spirit use me. Right. But then later on, I maybe get under conviction and I decide maybe I do need to do all those things. Now, God help me. That's a fresh filling of the power of the Holy Spirit so that there's only one indwelling, but many fillings. Because you read in the book of Acts, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and this thing there happened. And then another time, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That just simply means asking for the extra infilling of the Holy Spirit to work through you. You let the power flow. And like Jesus said, that out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural, of living waters. Yeah. But I could just say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm, just, I'm not going to do it. But then you go to the Old Testament, and it says thy word was sweet in my mouth like honey mm -hmm. but in my belly it just soured mm -hmm. and people that will that have been called to preach or to teach and won't do it it's like if they <laughs> just start getting it sick inside it just yeah it's just yeah, oh, there's something wrong here why well i don't feel very good spiritually speaking but remember if you get spiritually ill body soul and spirit right where all three of those come together that's balance but if I get spiritually ill because I'm not going to do it because I'm mad it's going to make me physically ill after a while mm -hmm. I'm just going to start feeling like I'm dragging okay so um, here in this passage we see that not all of the Christians spoke in tongues even back then when it was proper to do so in fact, the obvious inference is that no one Christian exhibited all of the gifts. In other words, each person possessed one or several of the gifts, but no one person possessed them all. Does that mean that those who did not speak in tongues were lost? And of course, I need to go down a little bit. The answer to that is no. All right. Need to go down a little more. Yeah. So, the blank note, once and for all, shows Why? that the... Lie. Lie of the charismatic movement. Those that believe you have to speak in tongues L -I -E. to be saved. L-I-E. L-I-E. <laughs> and not L-A-Y. L. My wife understands that joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, number six, the best gifts. Best. B-E-S-T. Best gifts. Verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Earnestly desire the best gifts. Be zealous in the pursuit and use of them, but don't covet them in a carnal, envious way. 
I've had friends that were in churches that said, you have to speak in tongues. They felt like dirt because they couldn't do it. They, they, they had a good profession of faith and they believed they were saved, but they were in a church and because they couldn't speak in tongues, it was like they were a second class citizen. My wife, Bonnie, that's in heaven, when we were up in Renton, the church had to rent facilities from a four-square church. Okay. They had their main auditorium, but then they had the old original auditorium, which was a two-story building, some offices down below, and, and a fairly good but small auditorium up above uh, on the second floor. Uh, that, well, it was on a hill, so it was really only, you only went up like three, four steps. And, um, but they got involved in the laughing movement. Huh? Yeah, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you start laughing. Really? And you're just laughing and you're laughing. Well, that developed into a puking movement. Wow. You can't laugh for 15 minutes or 20 minutes without throwing up. Wow. You can't. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> After a while, your body starts to rebel. We looked in the main auditorium, had a beautiful kind of a, not quite a deep purple and not quite a lavender, but a real nice kind of a rose color uh -huh. carpet. And there'd be a, a bleach a bleach spot about that big. Whoa. And then over here would be another bleach spot this big. Ooh. And a bleach spot that big. And we're going, Man, what happened to this carpet? Then we found out they were into the laughing and purging movement. Uh -huh. They'd laugh until they threw up. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pick that hydro, if you don't sop up that hydrochloric acid, it'll eat the color out of the carpet. And that's what those light, kind of a light spots were around. Mm -hmm. And so we were over in the other building. My office was, we rented some upstairs, the church that I was associate pastor and song leader and so forth. My, we had an office downstairs and I was in there and get something one night. And it was about 8 30, 9 o'clock at night, dark outside that time of year, and I heard, whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> and I'm looking around, I didn't know there were people upstairs, it was coming through the vents, the heater vents, oh. and I heard, whoa. <laughs> that's what they were doing, they were teaching, the, the women were having a meeting, teaching each other how to speak in tongues, make a no, noise, and let go, and the Holy Spirit will have you speaking in tongues. Oh when I went out the car to leave, I told Bonnie, I said, you got me to. Uh, oh. <laughs> and I said, you ought to hear that. She said, no, if I was in there, I'd have been out the back door and down the, yeah. there was a mountain down. <laughs> she said, you'd have had to pick me up down the bottom of the hill. Because I'd have been long gone if I heard, oh, uh, <laughs> in the middle of the night. And so uh, uh, then there was a movement where, a drunken movement. These are not drunk with wine, but are filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. So I heard the guy from Canada. I watched him on, on YouTube. And he was talking like this, man. Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he was just he was just drunk with the Spirit. And and you crow like a chicken. And you go, cock-a-doodle-doo. I thought, you screwball. I never heard a chicken in my life that goes, cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> I mean, ar -ar 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 yeah, I could go along with that, but he's going, uh, he was proving he was filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and crowing like a chicken, cock a doodle doo And I'm going, what kind of screwball stuff is this? Okay. So many of them are serious about that. Okay. I'm not getting on those that are serious. I don't believe it's of God, but I believe they believe that it's serious. But this guy was not serious. I mean, he was leading someone on. And it included probably when they panned the, the thing around the audience, he was probably leading a thousand people or more. I mean, that place was packed. Wow. And he was cock-a-doodle-doo. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard a chicken like that. In fact, if a chicken ever crowed and sounded like that, he'd probably take a gun and commit suicide. Because he would not be a self-respecting chicken going cock-a-doodle-doo. Okay. So... Uh, he said, listen, desire the gift of speaking in tongues back then when it was proper and biblical. He said, desire that, you know, desire the best best gifts, but not in a carnal way like, well, you don't speak in tongues and I do. Say, 
you got to be serious about, even back then when it was biblical to speak in tongues, there were those, obviously, or he wouldn't have written that into the letter, that, well, I'm better than you. Why? Well, because I speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Then the other guy says, oh, no, 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 no. I healed a sick man. I'm a lot better than you. Yours is just all of the mouth. I actually did something for somebody. But that's not, no, no, no. He said, sure, desire the gifts of healing or tongues or whatever it might be. Desire those gifts. But covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So don't desire him for a carnal reason. I want you to think I'm somebody important. He's desiring for the right reasons because I'm going to show you a better way than all of those gifts. And that's chapter 13. And we do have a few minutes left. All right. B, better gifts. Here we're told to covet the best gifts. And tongues is far down on the list. It's not even number one. It was last. In fact, interpretation is a separate gift, but it is inextricably involved with speaking in tongues. Someone who interprets what they spoke and what the other person spoke. And we're told that speaking cannot be done without interpretation. The speaking and the interpreting then must be considered as but two parts of the same category, tongues. Then we can see that even back then, tongues was a good gift, but not the best one, since the category was put last on the list. What Paul was telling them to do was to covet teaching prophecy, which today has been replaced by preaching. Also, miracles, helps, etc., above speaking in tongues. Now, love is better than gifts. Chapter 12, verses 31b to 13.3. And let's go down to that. All right, love is better than gifts, B-E-T-T-E-R, better. Introduction, a more excellent way, verse 31. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, we would translate that as love. The reason that translators put in the word charity, because a truly exercise of charity is I give something to you and you're a street person, there's no way you're going to give me anything back. And I do it, why? Because I want to help you. I, I, it's not because, look at me, look at me, I just help them out. No, most charity, you don't even tell the people, anybody else that you did it. You do it privately. Why? Because you have the right motive. And so charity is love, giving, expecting nothing in return, in fact, the one you give to probably couldn't give you anything back anyway. But even if they could, even if they could give you something back, that's not what you're after. In fact, you'd probably tell them, no, that's, never mind. I just wanted to help you. All right? So that's why it's translated as charity. He says, I'll show you a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Okay? For anybody that's been in the army, here's a bugle call, all right? And I'm just, it's not going to sound like a bugle. That means charge. Sounding brass is the soldiers are waiting. They're all hiding in the bushes. And this would probably be more like back, and they still do use the bugle, but now it's electronic. But let's say back in the Wild West, yeah. in the Army. Okay, they're waiting. They're getting ready to charge. They're waiting for the bugle. And the general tells the bugler, play charge. And he goes, black. And this, what are the soldiers going to do? What was that? They're just going to sit there and go, I never heard that one before. Right. Meanwhile, they look up, and here comes the enemy, and they're dead. <laughs> Sounding brass. Blah! It makes no sense to anybody. Or a tinkling cymbal. All right? That would be like playing a tambourine and just going, instead of, there is power, power, on ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 it's in time with the music. I made the mistake one, one time I handed, handed the tambourines out, a tambourine out up in Ogden. And the one lady said, I want to play tambourine. 
And we're saying, there is power, power. And she's going, ting, 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 ting. And it, it was messing me up because I'm trying to play the guitar and sing. And over there, I said, ting, 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 ting. I took it away. Because it made no sense. It wasn't in time with the music. Or That's what he's saying here. That if you're going to use something, use it the right way. He said, I, I could I could speak with the tongues of, of men and of angels and have not charity. He said, I'm not making any sense to anybody. I just become sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And those soldiers uh, or the people in the, in the band or in the orchestra, it's driving them nuts because it's a tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. And it doesn't make any sense. And the soldiers are all getting killed because the bugler doesn't have enough brains to play charge. <laughs> Oh, da, da, da. Da, da. there's one for going to sleep at night. Oh, yeah. But it's also taps for burying someone. But they all know we ain't at a funeral. So that means I'm supposed to go to sleep. I am at a funeral. That doesn't mean go to sleep at the funeral. That means we're laying someone to rest. Right. It has to make sense. And so he's saying, listen, if I spoke with the tongues of men and of angels, but I didn't have love, I'm not doing anything. I thought speaking in tongues was a good thing. Well, it was. At that time, it was biblical because they didn't have the word of God. It was giving them the word of God. He said, but if you do it without love, you're not doing any good. So he said, that's the best way. We're going to have to stop there. We're out of time. Uh, read chapter 13. Hopefully we'll get 13 and 14 next week. And we have 15 and 16. Hopefully we'll get through it all. I'll be doing first and third class because Brother Mullins is going to be in Mexico. So I'll, we'll have 1 Corinthians as the first class next week. We'll have it as the third class. And then we're done for the year. Make sure you have your homework for Brother Mullins' class done. Those online, uh, you can email it to me. <laughs> no, take your fingers out of your ears. Okay? Yeah, so, uh, remember it's not, it's in the work. book it says the SOS and the five approach yeah. question. Because we had to compress it into one quarter, the only thing you have to write out is the four spiritual principles. Oh, yeah. Do you have to like write the whole thing out or just? Roman numeral one. The first spiritual principle is the fact of sin. Romans 3.23 for all have sinned and come so short of the glory of God. You have to have it all? Yep. Ah. Then, Roman numeral 2, the consequences of sin. Romans 6, 23. For, quotation mark, for the wages Reason of sin, sin is death. death. Quotation mark. God Roman God. numeral 3, etc., etc. So you just have to write out the four spiritual principles and the scriptures world. that go with them. Yeah. You don't have to write out the approach questions and the illustrations in between because we had to compress it so much online they have to write out the entire thing hmm. the SOS the five approach questions the four spiritual principles with all of the statements and main words and you know the whole thing uh, in your textbook you have a page that has the entire presentation in four sections the reason I did that is you can cut out one of those sections. It'll only be that tall, and it's got the whole thing on it. Mm -hmm. And where's it at? It's uh, the last page in your textbook. And the reason I put it in there, put it in it's right there. You can tape it in the front of your Bible. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. It's got everything. It's got the uh, uh, SOS, self-interest, occupation, soul-winning message, five approach questions. You are interested. It goes through the whole thing. <laughs> it does. And when I was in uh, Bible college, we were we would go into class for an hour or two. Then we would take tracks and go out in the neighborhood around the church that hosted the college. And we went soul with it, door to door, knocking on the door. And what I would do is I had one of these taped on the visor of my car. So when I stopped at a stoplight, SOS, self-interest, occupation, and the soul winning man. Oh, light turn. Next time I stop somewhere, for the wages of sin is death. And that's how I memorized it. 
But when I first went soul winning, what I'd do is I'd tell, if I got a chance to actually deliver the plan of salvation, I'd tell them, this is so important, I want to make sure I'm going to get it right. So if you don't mind, I'm going to read it right out of here because I don't want to make any mistakes because this is so important. And that's what I'd do. I'd turn to that and I'd say, uh, now the, the fact of sin, the first spiritual principle is Romans 3.23. And I and and then I marked my Bible. That one's for all have sinned and come short of the glory. Of God. Yep, that's it. Woo! I remembered one. Hey, you remembered one out of the four. That means you can get a twenty-five percent on that test. What do I need to pass? Uh, you need one hundred percent. This right here, huh? Yeah, and you just cut one of those out and tape it in the front of your Bible. And that's what you want me to do with things. Uh, all I want is the first spiritual principle is the fact of sin, Romans three twenty-three. For all the sin and come short of the glory of God. That's all you have to put under there. And then Roman numeral two. I wondered why. Consequences of that. sin. Okay. I wondered why you why these were here yeah, like that. Yeah. That's why that extra one is there, so, so you, you can want cut one. Facts of sin. Yep. So the just the spiritual principle, Roman numeral one, two, three, and, and then four. You want the consequences of sin. Yep. And then the and personal then the response. For sin? Yep. And just the scripture. You have write to write out, out the scripture with it. Write it all out. Sue. The, the all point, out. Roman numeral one, what that point is, and then under it, the scripture. Romans 3, 23. For all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. And you've got point one done. It's in this book, Sue. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, she'd look back. Okay, so yeah. turn those in to me next week. That's for Brother Mullins' class. And we will try to get through as much as we can of 1 Corinthians. If we don't get all the way through the book, I'll just give you my teacher's book so you can fill in the blanks. All right? But we're going to try. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Doc. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being here. Otherwise, uh, well, I'd still have people online. But it's a lot easier when there's people in. You still have Gracia most of the time. Yeah. But at least here I get to look at somebody's face. Right. All right. So would you dismiss feet. dismiss <laughs> huh? and not feet? <laughs> face and not feet. I'll probably no. Her her feet are beautiful, but her face is more beautiful. Right. I don't and want to stick my feet in my face. It's called horrible. putting your foot in your mouth. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, dismiss us. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you, Lord, for all the wisdom and knowledge that you gave us, and thank you, Lord, for applying it to our hearts and letting us learn and retain it. And thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in our life. Thank you, Lord, for being a wonderful God and helping us every day. And this and help everybody safe home. And have a good week. And this we say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, I want to get this offline. So you got you Maybe got pay. four. You got